the Coach Kyle Show. Hi there, welcome, welcome back to another episode of the Coach Kayo Show. Kayo Day here. Um, first of all, let me quickly remind you that greater is he that is in us um, than he that is in the world. Remember this show, we talk all things soccer. Um, hopefully you would have pushed your clock forward so you are um you're making your way here and you're on time but yeah this show talk all things soccer and um the uniqueness about this show it's it speaks to um it speaks more to what is transpiring off the field that i that we firmly believe here that is neglected um, more times than not because it's not seen as significant. But we always believe that um, the person plays uh, the person plays the game. Um, it's not two different. Um, it's not two different people uh, when it comes to what you're doing outside of the field and what you're doing on the field. So makes it very unique, um, but it's all related to soccer and the game based on where you're listening from, um, football. But the most um, important objective here is to inspire. And we don't take that, we don't use that word loosely. It's to inspire, it's to impact the lives of our young people in and these are very crucial time and, and you know we could all feel like we we can we can figure it all out on our own. Um we might think that we, we got all the the right answers. Uh, because you know everybody's right. Every single person is right in their own eyes. But it's the outcome you know, that truly that the outcome can truly define um, if you if you have the ability, if you are on the right path. So while you might think that you're right, while you might think that you are doing all that you should be doing, it's very important to have some level of accountability. So to live, to live out purpose, to to seek after um, what you were born to do, to seek out your very uniqueness that you have um, is super important. And if we can, if we can do, um, if we can add value to, to, to that process, if we can reinforce, if we can remind you how important that is, then I believe it's very important. I believe it's um, it's needed now more than ever. Like for the past few weeks, I just felt the need to ask more questions rather than seem like um, I have the answers. And, and the answers to me, the answers lie in in the experience um the answers lie in different perspective if you have a growth mindset if you are trying to go beyond where you are if you don't want to feel like you are the you are the only voice got to be careful because you need to hear your own voice because the very uniqueness of yourself 
and, and nobody and no one can beat you being you. You need to you need to be listening to your own voice. But when it comes to accountability, when it comes to challenging others to be their best self, you know, perspective is very important. Um, asking more questions is important. Um, finding out the truth about who you are and accepting that truth regardless of where it leads to i think it sets a it sets a tone for becoming a better becoming the better bet, being a better version of yourself clear that up it helps you you be honest with yourself um, and being honest with yourself is you being really honest with you. It's you accepting that this is who you are because not everybody really, um, not everybody are overly critical about themselves in that way, even though they know it's the truth about who they are and what they're doing. They lie to themselves so much or they, they justify themselves so much that they are unable um, to honestly look at themselves and see um, their own their own wrong. And I I don't think being honest with yourself is telling everybody your business. I don't I don't I don't think that. I don't think that is a definition of being honest with yourself. I think the very, I think the very, you being honest with yourself and knowing what it is begins your process. I firmly believe it begins your process of having a healthy life and begins the process of transformation for you. The very reason that you accept it and don't want it. Now, if you lie to yourself because you don't want to deal with what that truth does to you personally, then that's what you create. You create a false narrative of, of who of who you are. So this 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 show is really to inspire, this show is really to impact, this show is to really empower. Um our young people to have that uniqueness because that's what purpose is. Like I said, I want to ask more questions. So my question, my question tonight is how do you lead? Um, how do you lead? would love to hear um, different perspective uh, from I had some good ones, I had some good um, interaction last week. I want to take the time to thank those who who chime in and who had um, their own perspective. It's encouraging. And I can tell you that it opened my eyes and, and made me want to seek more to, to dive deeper into truly understanding things from different perspective. Because one of the things that can happen is you, you you start trusting yourself so much that, and which you should, regardless, because you must stay true to yourself. But you don't want to trust yourself to the point where um, you miss out on opportunities to be a better version of yourself. But you also don't want to listen to every single thing and 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 cater to every single thing, and lose who you are. So you always have to be, um, you always have to be in, in that place where you are growing, but you are growing being the best version of yourself. And I think leadership plays a major role, uh, plays a major role in that. So I would love to hear um some perspective on how people lead because obviously there's different leadership styles um, 
but I just want to know how you lead. I don't, I'm not talking about different ways to lead or, um, or I'm not on that side of the fence tonight, that is, but it's how do you lead? And what does that mean to you in terms of in this time, in, in this, this generation where the more you learn, the more you do, the more you dive deeper, the more you you seek wisdom. There's some things that, like for me personally, there's things that I I'm figuring out now that I'm grateful for and truly understand, having a better understanding of um, of my why and have a better understanding of why you are on this part, why you are dealing with the things that you're dealing with. And there's, there's so much confidence in that because you have the opportunity to, to now make a choice of where you want to be. And you don't know, you, you oftentimes are stuck or you are constantly regressing. But when you know, you now you have a choice. You can now choose. And I can't tell you enough how much power there is when you have the ability to choose. It's, it's freedom. Um, I think about someone who is in prison. They don't have no free, they don't have the freedom. They're ordered. They are told what to do, when to do it. You know, I could, I could see that not being such a comfortable or a healthy life. You know, every every single person like freedom and leadership for me plays a major role in that. But I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you some time to to think about that and maybe share this live podcast and because um, you know I believe in sharing so that the message can reach some um, someone. There's so much negativity around, you know. People are searching for something positive. People are searching for something that can can motivate them and and. People are searching for things that they can connect with. So you never know when you share what it can do for someone else. It might not necessarily do anything for you, which is totally fine. But it might do something. Um, it might inspire. It might change the course of action for someone else. So please do share. And, and let me say thank you for those who would have shared, uh, who subscribed to the Kyrie McKinnon and Co. channel. Um, if you haven't done so, please do. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can know when we're on. I know the time change. You might be, you might be um, caught behind if you didn't move your clock forward. Nevertheless, um, the show will be it will be up live on, on on YouTube. It will be up live on Facebook, so you can always reconnect with it after. But please do share. Um, but we'll take a quick, uh, take a quick break. All things in place. Um, I will come right back and see if we could figure out um, the best, uh, the best approach in terms of leadership. We'll be right back. Coyote, McKinnon and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon and company. 
be care. Hi, welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. Kayo Day here. Remember this show, we talk all things soccer. Um, we're dealing with, um, we're asking the question, actually, how do you lead? I know there's a lot of leaders out there. There's a lot of coaches who are responsible for, um, excuse me, younger people, um, young people, young adults, um, they're responsible for groups and leadership is such uh, an inspiring and, and powerful uh, tool uh, that is totally, from my perspective, um, unused, especially within within the youth environment. Um, but at every course, at every soccer course, for those who um, take part in advancing uh, their education so they can advance um, the game of soccer and education in soccer is super important you know you hear people say well they don't need to go to a course they play um, they don't need to go to a course because uh, what is it going to do for them and, and all manner of things but i think uh, we must not we must not underestimate um, education, especially when it when it relates to what is it we what is it we're trying to do, it just shows that we have a growth mindset. It just shows that we uh, we are okay with being uncomfortable. Um, we're okay being uncomfortable in certain situations where we are challenged, because we ask our young people, we ask our young players uh, to. Uh, to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations every single practice session because they're struggling, they're dealing with all manner of things, they're dealing with school, um, they're dealing with situations at home, um, they're dealing with their own identity, and we're saying to them, like, that is part of life. Um, I know you're uncomfortable now, but guess what? You need to keep pushing um, because... Um, you at some point in time, that thing you will become comfortable with. And, and that is the very thing that will be the definition of your greatness. So I, I believe when we go to see your Sonia, good, good, please do share. I think it's an, it's, it's a, it's a very important tool, leadership um, and educating yourself in this aspect uh, is very important. Is very important because you are responsible for moving or creating an environment that will speak to uh, the growth of others. So you are building, you are building blocks for your participants or your athletes. Or your players, however you want to define it, uh, to make those steps towards their greatness. So leadership is a very important thing. I don't know if the I don't know if the if the topic is uh, if the question um, could be very what we would say. Um, if it's a tough question, but I would think it's only a tough question if you have not really thought about your role. And not just a definition within the within within the dictionary and and or the definition where you are educated enough and intellectual enough to articulate but it's not a part of your truth so if you're out there and you you see yourself as a leader regardless if you you know leaders are not just coaches 
leaders are also parents leaders um leaders also the neighbor leaders also a teacher and, and that means we can all learn from every leadership style it's not it's not only in soccer you you you, you don't just take uh, the leadership from soccer and 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 that is the end all um, you can take leadership from baseball you can take leadership from golf there's so many different systems in place for leadership that can be utilized across the board so it's not limited to how you lead in soccer this is an open question you know how do you lead and the question is very important because i feel like there's 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 so many young people who want to be led you know i've i think i've been in in youth soccer since what 19 like coaching since about 1998 yeah just love the idea of seeing where people can be think really analyzing and identifying with you know how I go about things is more of, of a visionary kind of thing where I work my way back I have a vision of of what I see and where I see it can be and that begins the process um, and very few people could understand that because you know a lot of times people say you work based on where they are and that's in some respects is, is true but if you get caught up with where they are as the basis of how you work then you're not really preparing them it will be like a glorious surprise to each and every one of you if something changes, and then there's no method to take it forward you're just going to be making up stuff but i think if you have a vision and you start working your way back then you can you can ultimately respect where they are but you are working with them knowing where they can be i think it's important because young people need to be led hi andrea good to see you good night but you know for some people good night is goodbye so be careful and for some people is good night hello but young people need to be led and i don't think they truly understand what it means to to have leadership in their life i don't think that i truly understood that even when i was younger um it's a tough one and if we all take a second and reflect and and and, and really have a good introspect introspection on our lives like do we really understand what it is to be led do we really understand what leadership is that's why i asked the question i would love to hear a different perspective on this it don't matter if you come you you came from a good home where there's discipline um you could come from homes where it's 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 discipline you're asked to you're asked to live uh, by some moral code based on societal norms or expectations um some biblical you could be coming from a quality home where you're comfortable you you have the quality of life you're well taken care of um you could come from humble upbringings where life is a struggle and 
you know, you you taught certain things, but is it the, is it the definition of is it the definition of leadership because you are you are taught certain things and you are and you're told this is what you need to do and this is what will make you uh, a successful person you you live by these you live by these rules you live by these things you live by you live by um you live by these commandments you live by all these things and and, and yes we could make a we could make a huge argument that is true but i think most young people and if i go back and even in my in my in my younger days i think you people see leadership as correction and people have the ability or the power to correct you and maybe true maybe true punishment true threats maybe true you do as i say or you will this will happen to you um, maybe that's how we were all brought up to understand what leadership is uh, the authoritarian the person who have uh, who 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 said have the have your life in their hands who have the keys to the door and you hear stuff like that you say people say you you know when your hand when your hands in tiger mouth pat his head you hear people say things like um sometimes you have to keep, eat the crumbs before you hear people say all those things they say you have to bow down before you there's so much things people say when you are you are in a place where you under authority and it's claim that that is leadership so i don't know maybe most young people understand leadership from just a place of correction and not a place of service it's maybe i don't know my experience is that i truly never understood what leadership is maybe it's because it's a continuation of things that was never really dealt with or never really looked at maybe we all in this in this maybe we all in this place where we can only lead by correcting we 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 don't understand um the service aspect of it it creates a lot of conflict because when you remove from under the authoritarian or when you feel like this some level of freedom where you can you have your own life or you could make your own decisions and that authoritarian approach no longer can suffice then it creates conflict there's no place uh, for communication you might say well well what does it have to do with soccer because it starts in your home whatever you're taught you you bring it outside of your home and your parents send you anywhere they say you know i taught you well that means do what you do at home don't go don't go don't go somewhere and embarrass me don't go and do something that people will look at us like if we don't do nothing with you so if that if this if this is the case that leadership is about correction and not about service and now the child comes to a soccer program from my perspective it should be serving them 
which should be inspiring them, which should bring about transformation in their lives, they are influenced by what is going on at home, which is, I am the authority, I correct. There's no service. And that's important to note because the homes are the biggest stakeholders in soccer. Soccer is a pay-to-play sport. And the biggest stakeholders influence how at certain level or at most level where development must happen where our young people need it is influenced by those very principles so the question is if 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 the home is leading through correction rather than service and they are the biggest stakeholders that have the biggest influence, are you leading to serve? You leading to serve or are you forced to cater? You're forced to cater to what the expectations are. How is that? How is that affecting our young people? How is that affecting their lives? How is that affecting their progress? And it was funny to know, like, really thinking about it. If you don't know, if you don't know that you're suffering, how dangerous is that that you are, how dangerous that you are suffering in silence? You know, a kid get up and go take their own lives and you ask yourself, what is happening? Why? Why did this happen? You start questioning your parenting. You start questioning yourself, you know. You know. Because people suffer in silence. And that's what leadership is supposed to be about should be about inspiring it should it's not just it's not about motivation cuz motivation don't bring about transformation motivation is a quick fix it's something that you need now and it it has its place but leadership is way beyond motivation It's about transformation in, in, from my perspective. would like to hear some different perspective. Um, maybe this is a deep one. But it's important because young people, what this show is about, need to be led. They need leadership because you see what, it, you see what is transpiring. And because they they only know about correction, and when they come out of that environment, they they feel, and maybe teachers are dealing with that too, where, you know, they're so limited because the more you feel like you're you're not you're not being heard, you you you're not being you you're not able to be your best self. And because you under this authority and you know and one of the things about that when you have so so much authority over people it establishes fears it establishes doubts it, it you know they know what can happen to them they could lose they could lose so many things they could lose um, the ability to go out excuse me lose the, the ability to, to associate with their friends they they might lose um they might lose some stipend, they might they might lose their phone, they might and all these things are maybe creating this fear because 
it's more about correction than service. And now, and they come to you and they come to the soccer program and that's where they find their freedom and they, they're no longer there to learn. They're there to challenge. How many teachers are dealing with challenges within school more than having the ability to actually teach the kids because the they, majority of them are there to just learn and suck up and soak up everything. Teachers have to be dealing with all kind of craziness now when, when, they, when the kids come to school. And it's the same thing with soccer. Kids are not, kids are often, oftentimes not showing up to learn. They're showing up to challenge. They're showing up to challenge leadership. You can't correct them. If you criticize them too hard, now it's a psychological issue. They have psychological issues to be correct because they're being corrected about things that they, meet, that, they, that they need to do better. They think it's harsh. They think you're being too hard on them. You, they think that you, know, you have to cater to them even though their behaviors are inappropriate for what they're trying to achieve. And maybe it's not because they maybe not because they don't want it, maybe because that's the only thing they know. The correction, the correction, the authoritarian, they don't know about service. They don't know, um, they don't understand what leadership really means. They, people are unable to recognize what they're dealing with without them saying a word. Because to do that, you you will have to you will you will need to have some amount of wisdom. Because if if a if a if a young player is under your authority, if a young child is under your authority and they know what can happen if they do certain things, if they act a certain way, maybe they might just get silent and they might be suffering in silence and they might uh, you know they might take actions. That if you don't have the ability to see it, then you will not know. They might they, they, they might not say nothing to you. They might not say anything to you. And they're behaving in it and they're acting out in a certain way and 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 you're forced to take certain actions because they need discipline. They need to be respectful, they need to do all these things. But they think about them. Think about the, the the player coming from home with that same mentality to a place, to a soccer field, which they're supposed to be leadership, which they're supposed to be uh, some amount the inspiration and bringing about transformation in their life and creating these new behaviors for what they want to achieve, and they are not ready for that. They see it as home. So now you have two problems. And the child and the player, the child, the young person is in the middle of a dilemma. Because now they start trusting themselves and they don't have the ability or the know-how to make these informed decisions um, about not just now, but about about the future and what how it can be affected. Because on one hand, there's only correction and there's authoritarian over there. And on this side of the fence, which is the soccer side of the fence, they're catering to that because that's the only way um, those resources will continue to come because uh, there's a lot of pandering to that. There's a lot of that. Um, and now you're leaving them to have this independent mind, which to me is baseless if there's no leadership. You know, if you want to, you, you, they talk about it all the time. You know, the players need to be independent. They need, need to be independent thinkers. Well, if there's no leadership, what are they thinking about? You have to be able to give, you have to be able to give, equip people with tools and equip them with the knowledge and then let them conceptualize for themselves to develop an independent mind. If they, if they don't know nothing, your argument is baseless. 
about independent thinking. You're not even, and if you're not even leading, how what independent, what type of independent thinking they will have? Who will they be accountable for to? Do they even know their responsibility? But you give them independent minds. Or let let them let them do let them do what they want to do. Or let them be happy. You know, you hear that a lot. No, let us cater to them because if we make them if we make them feel comfortable in their mess, they will they will come back. If we make them feel comfortable with the wrong things they're doing, oh, that's not my child. So, you know, I'm here to do my job. No, you're there to lead as a coach. You, you're you there to lead. You're, you're there to help with the transformation. This child would not be 13 for the rest of their life. They will be 14. They will be 15. They will be 16. And the mere fact that they, 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 they were with you at 13 or 9 or 11, and think about it. You, you're, you're only catering to what they can bring to you, and not necessarily what your role is in their lives in terms of leading them. Think about what that does. You have, you have a child with you from seven years old all the way to 12, and you're just happy that they could dribble and pass a ball. All you could do is show on Instagram how 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 they could dribble and pass, but they're dealing with so many things. They're um, they're suicidal, and you don't even know. They're dealing with all manner of pain and hurts. They don't even they they're not even their true self. They show up with an alternative self every time because they are shame. They're afraid. They are in doubts of who they really are. They don't even want to connect with that side because it's so ugly. And that's what you coaching and that's what you are excited about and posting them on Instagram. And then they do, they, you see them next five years and you say, that was that was my player. And you and you have no shame. You have <laughs> You have no shame. You're not even affected. I know one coach said in my presence, and he said, "I don't, I don't care if they put me to if they put me to coach kids on a track, I will coach them. As long as I get him pay at the end, end of the month." These are some of the things that pe- these are some of the things that we put we we put our, our we put our kids in the hands of people like that. Who says I don't? You know, if they want me to train on a track, I'll train on a track. If they want to, if they want me to train on 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 a, a ten by five every single day, I will do that. I mean, the situation different, and that's what might be. That's what you might that that little five by ten. You might have to use that, but that is your mentality as a leader. But then the then the child have to go play on an eighty by fifty. Or they have to go and play on a, on, a, on a 130 by 90. And then now you want to lead. Now you want to stand up on the side of the field and tell them how bad they are. You want to tell them how they, they don't know to use space. You want to totally remove yourself from the responsibility. You don't want to be accountable. But during the week, you know, you get in pay. And that's what parents want. They don't care. They, you know, it's, it's a five-minute drive for them, and they come and drop their kids off, and they're gone, and and that's it. And you are comfortable as a leader. While the while our young people, you know, why the young players are starving um, to be led, they're starving for inspiration. They're starving for the truth. They starve for the truth while you are more concerned about your business. And each to his own. It's, it's not as how you lead, that's how you lead. If if that is 
what makes people comfortable, that's what makes them comfortable. I'm not here to say you are wrong or you are right. I am, I'm, I'm asking the question, how do you lead? And, and if that's how you lead, how impactful it is to the prosperity or the, or, or the productiveness of this young athlete, what will be the outcome? Do you have a clear vision based on what you're doing now? Can you speak to the outcome with truth? And not an intellectual, uh, at an intellectual way that reach the minds of people who are unable to see beyond it. I think wisdom is a very important thing when it comes to leadership. Very important. Because you have to you have to have the insight to things that you cannot really see. And I think you have to be totally honest about what you're doing to have uh, that scale removed from your eyes to see things um, that you can you can intercept. Because things that can be seen with wrong people can be used in a manipulative way or in a dangerous way. So obviously certain things that are very, very important and sensitive and dangerous, you know, you're going to have to have some amount of wisdom. And I think wisdom only comes when you are passionate and when you are honest and when you are truth, truthful about what you're engaging. Don't make you perfect. Don't make you do everything right. Because there's yet they're yet to find somebody who does everything right, who is perfect, who who have everything in place. You know, a, a lot of people like to the think they are, which is which is okay. It's their choice. But who can really stand up and say there's nothing on their name or nothing in their behavior that speaks to to wrong? But there's a passion and there's an honesty that we can have that challenges us, that convicts us every time we do something. And that is leadership. That is my perspective on, on, on leading. We have the ability to provide a great opportunity to the young people. Because it could be a continuation of things that has happened to the people that they're that responsible for them. It could be a continuation, and you have the opportunity, maybe to just maybe to break that cycle, to to put them on a different course. Because that's what they come into you for. I don't I don't understand why we believe that young people are just coming to us to just kick a ball. And they'll say, well, yeah, they're just coming for recreation, recreation. But that's a lie. Every single club speaks about the four important components within soccer. And they speak to the technical aspect. They speak to the tactical aspect. They speak to the, phys the, the physical aspect. And here, the big one, they talk about the psychological aspect. So that it means that whatever you are doing or not doing, have some amount of psychological impact on this child's life. Now, the body don't control the brain. The brain controls the body. So whatever we, whatever we allow this child or this young player to accept will be used in how they live their lives. Oh, Oh, it's not my responsibility because when I do it, there's a complaint from the parents to the directors and they say, I'm not good for business. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do exactly what they want me to do. The question is, though, are you being honest about what you're doing? And if you're not honest about what you're doing, don't you think that is translating itself 
to the person in which you're working with. So what, what do you believe will be the outcome? Because now you can't put them, you can't challenge them in the way so they reach to the unknown. The thing that is the thing that is waiting on them, the thing that they want to achieve, that is before them, that they have to work hard, they have to respect the journey. It's taken away from them because you will no longer challenge them to be that. So now, a false leader creates a false individual. Excuse me. So because you cannot be honest with what you're doing, because to be honest, to be truthful, enrollment will suffer because no it seems like no one want to understand that regardless if it's soccer or life you will have to be challenged you will have to be uncomfortable barring that it's done um, in a way that could be truly understood that could truly be articulated to uh, to prove that it can uh, it can provide the desired outcome with the absence of that there is nothing to achieve with the absence of challenges with the absence of being put through an uncomfortable situation which they call the journey and and I heard something today that you know most people if 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 you can if you like to ride you will ride without no problems. If you like the destination more than you like to ride, your focus will always be on how quick am I going to get there. You are not, you will not be, uh, you will not be motivated by the journey. But if you like to ride, you will ride, you will ride and you'll get there and you'll be like, whoa, I got here already. Or, you will ride through the rain. You will. I, I remember days when, when I was playing. Um, there's days that I plan to go go and run in 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 the twelve o'clock sun. And if you if if anybody on this thing know Linden and know the Linden Highway, when it's twelve o'clock in Guyana, Linden, it's maybe the hottest time when it's hot. But I would choose to go run at that time. And maybe to some people, why is he running? Is he crazy? But that was my choice because I wanted to suffer. And I wanted to suffer through that. I wanted to challenge myself to do it. And then I, my goal is to go run a whole hour. How, 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 however far that hour takes me, that's it. I will turn back and then I have to make my hour back home. That's the challenge. That 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 is the challenge that I placed on myself. I wanted to be uncomfortable. I I wanted, I I wanted to experience that because I know in a in a sport where you have to compete, it's not all about the X and O's. It's not always about the technical ability. It's sometimes not always about the tactical ability. It's sometimes is about the person who who willing to go beyond what where they can go. In that moment, in that situation, there's something else that needs to drive you. There's something that needs to ask questions in those moments that you want to answer, and you don't want to quit, and you don't want to give up. You don't want to. You. It's. It's not in you. It's not in you to give up. There's no. There's nothing in you that wants to give up because you took yourself through. You put yourself through these situations. You cannot challenge somebody if you are catering to things that they are doing, their behaviors that is not a representation of what they really want to achieve. You cannot cater to that. And I know if coaches want to be honest, because there's a lot of coaches that get into coaching 
with the right passion, with the right desire, with the love of the game, and then they they come in and they see the system and they force to change their whole idea about leadership. And maybe some, you have to beg the question, are we not going to these courses just to have the license to say, to give us merit? Because you have the license, which is supposed to give you the merit, but then you come back into an environment that don't really want you to use, the, use your license. So what is the point? What is the point of you going and get a license, but then you are dishonest with the process? you given the license a bad name. The purpose of the license is now compromise. And the license are necessary because it speaks to your growth mindset. It, cre it speaks to you wanting to learn and develop yourself and challenge yourself to be a better coach. But what is the purpose of going and get the license? But then you come back into your environment and it's the same thing. You are, you are unable to lead in the way you should because you will lose enrollment. Parents will walk out the, your program like, because you you can't hold it you can't hold the kids accountable anymore you cannot you cannot you can't challenge them you can't do nothing because leadership is more about co correction more than service if you telling me it's more about service then you've got to hold them accountable you have to put them in situations where they are uncomfortable. And if their parents truly understand that, they will embrace you so that the child knows that, listen, you're not getting no way out. This is good for you because guess what? Next five, six years, when you're on your own and you're in college and you have to make your own decisions, you will have to call back these things. They say train up the child in the way they should go, that when he's old or when she's old, they will not depart from it. If you're not training, if you're not, if you're not leading them in, in, in the way in which they should go, when they get to that point where they have independence, what will they do with it? What what would what 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 will what will they find there when they have the independence? Because they're gonna be running on something. They're gonna be running on their own idea, or they will be running on the autonomy. The thing that you have encoded, the thing that you have downloaded in their lives. That's what they're gonna be dealing with. But I'll come back. I'll bring this. I'll bring the curtains down on this, cause, uh, like I said, I just got questions, and hopefully, when this show would have end, I will see uh, a lot more answers in the comment section and and stuff to to for people to really define, you know, how 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 do we lead? How should we lead? Because as it as it stands right now, I think it's more about pandering more than anything else. It's not the essence of what leadership, from my perspective, uh, means, and, and it, a challenge would be well would be welcome. It's to inspire, it's to bring about transformation, it's to move you from where you are to where you need to be. And you do that when you make people uncomfortable. So they learn to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. They learn to overcome things. They learn, they understand that everything is part of the journey. You don't just get to the destination without taking a journey. And the journey could be filled with so many things, but you have to have a passion. You're going to have to have a desire. You're going to have to have um, the inspiration to, to, to understand this is all part of the process. You're going to have to love it enough to know, to, to understand that. If, the, if your only focus is the destination, then everything else will be an opposition. 
And that opposition will be looked at as regression. So RK just clean. Um, sponsor our learning corner. When we get back, I will just bring the curtains down on this show. We'll be right back. So while I want the opposition to see this space and I want them to see this space, okay, that's what I want them to see because in reality, they don't want, I don't want my 11 to go to my four. But what they don't see is the three being halfway between the two. I know some of you young players listening to this now will say, well, Full backs don't mark full backs. Now there's like 25, 30 years ago. This, the game has evolved and is advancing and you always have to be prepared to advance with it. So now, by forcing the opposition to play this way, now the four is seeing this. What he don't recognize or what she don't recognize is the three is predicting that play because that is what the opposition sees. So now with this, now you can pressure the ball and you maintain, now the five come, the four come across, change position based on pressure, change position based on pressure, change the position based on pressure. This player tucks to the inside, the seven comes to the inside, now, the nine is stopping the pass of the goalkeeper. In this position, you're not just taking, a, taking care of the, the numbers on the field, but the most important thing you're doing is taking care of the space. Now, if you win the ball, there, there are all these transition um, opportunities for you to score. Welcome back to the Coach Kyra Show. Kyra Day here. We are asking this very important question. How do you lead? And there is a need for leadership um, across the board. Um, there is a need for inspirational leadership. There is a need for honest um, leadership. Um, honesty is always a challenge. Um, but honesty to yourself is the most important thing. I think once you, um, once you practice this honesty, um, you become a pathological liar or a dishonest person. So it's always okay when, you know, somebody says you're not a good. You're not a good liar because I always know when you're lying or whatever. That's good. That means you're not practicing. That's good. Oh, you're not good at doing this. I always know when you're doing it. That is awesome. You should pat yourself on the back because you, you, you don't, you haven't practiced enough. You haven't done it enough time to become, to make it become part of you. So you're still deficient. You're still inefficient. You still, yes, you're still inefficient with that lifestyle. So you should now sit down and be like, all right, maybe I need to practice what I'm really good at, which is being honest, which is being genuine, which is being loyal. Because if I'm not good at it, because I'm, I'm always getting caught, it's because guess what? I haven't practiced enough. That's a good thing when it comes to lying and being deceitful. You don't want to be good at it. So you should be happy when somebody says you're not good at it because you haven't practiced it enough. Now, if they if they can't figure you out, then then you might have a problem because it's now it's now who you are, and you're really good at it. 
You see it with cleftomania. They just, they just can't stop. They can't stop themselves, and they're good at it. You just, look, you just blink, it going. So it's a need um, for honest leadership, and I think you have to be honest. And people say, "Well, what is honest?" You, you know, honest is you. I, I think that's the only definition outside of, you know, obviously, if you, if you, if you're a biblical person or if you're a believer, then there's there's certain rules there. But ultimately, you have you you've got to make that choice in your own self to do to be that. So I think honesty and 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 and, and loyalty and all these things starts from you, the individual. You have to know your own heart. It don't matter what you have done or what somebody think about you. They will they will think regardless. They will say whatever they want to say regardless. The most important thing, it's you and your heart and what you what you are striving to be. You're the only person who knows if you're honest or if you're doing something honest or you're not. You're the only person who really and truly knows that. Because a lot of times people do things and say things based on the situation. I just said, the coach said, if you want me to train on a track, I'll train on a track. He's saying that based on the situation. Does he really want to train on a track? Because obviously, if he if he have if, if he got any amount of pride or any amount of respect for what for what he's doing, he will know that that will not help the kids, and ultimately it would affect him if he truly loved the game. Or maybe you could judge the person and say, "Well, he's he's such a this or he's such a that." But maybe he needs to be reminded that maybe that's not how the way you want to think or that's not what you want to say. I know I know that's how they're behaving. I know that's what they're saying. I know that's what they, they're pushing you towards. But is that how you really feel? Is that how you really feel in your heart? There's a lot of people who are doing things, but that's not how they really feel in their heart. And, and I'm here to tell you, you better get back to what you really feel in your heart and what you really believe to be true. Because at the end of the day, nothing evil will stand. I don't care how long. I don't care how good it looks. At the end of the day, there's a price for evil. There's a price for, there's a price for doing something wrong. You, 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 you're never going to get, you, if you think you're going to get away with doing something wrong, yes, you might get away to people in, your, in, in front of you. You might, get, you might get away because people might not know, but you still have to answer to God. You still have to answer. You still you look at your life. Look at your situation. Look at the, how things go. Look at why you're not really achieving all the things you want to achieve. Is there any conviction in your heart? Do you really are you really are you really honest with yourself? There's a need for leadership, and we all need to learn how to lead because a lot of us learn it from just correction. We know who's in authority, and that's it. You're being told what to do. And if you don't, then we'll, we we will punish you. We will. There's no service, and, and service could look like: listen, my child is so depressed. My child is going through the worst time, and maybe your child just don't like her life. Maybe he just don't like his life. Maybe he just don't. He's he's not comfortable with how he behaves. He he might not be even comfortable with his own room. He might not be comfortable with his own how how his his clothes always unorganized, and he don't even know how to fix it. And he's just mad, and and he, he's just crazy, and he's he's throwing all these tantrums. And you're like, what is wrong with him? And maybe your service could be, you know what? I'm going to clean this boy room up. I'm going to clean this child room up. And when they come home from school, they will see an awesome room. And that might change the whole perspective. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But that's there's, there's, there's not service. Guess what the parent will do? Hey, clean this room up. And if I don't see this room clean, you, I'm going to take away your video games. Because guess what? Authority. Correction. I'm your boss. And they taught us well. And then they blame us. And then they have all of these things they have to say about, oh, how did my child turn like this? What did you do? Did you ever lead? Did you ever did you ever taught anyone how to lead? Have you? 
Can you sit down and take a pen and a paper and, and write and say, this is how I taught you to lead? Oh, because you give me some biblical guidance, maybe because you 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 taught me to be honest, maybe because you, you taught me to be this and be that. There's a real world out here that don't care. There's a real world that people will do stuff to people that will drive them to things that without truly understanding how to lead and how to and how to uh, how to truly connect with who you really are knowing that it's the basis of your life and not justifying what is happening to you maybe it will turn out very different but, but leadership is not about service it's about correction. And that's what's coming from homes and it's coming in to a soccer field where you have over 4,000 and more kids playing soccer just in this country. Think about worldwide. And you see what is going on. You see all the bullying. You see teachers don't even want to teach. They're scared. I know people who are supposed to be teaching and be like, who? I'm not going into no school. These kids, I, it's like you, a person is forced to give up their passion because the kids not coming to learn. They, they, if a teacher, if a teacher finds a child who is ultimately fully committed to just coming in there and just want to soak up every single thing, the amount of attention that child gets, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Why are they getting that? Because they don't exist across the board. <laughs> it's not a 90% ratio. It's more like 10 to 90. They need to be led. What are we going to do? How are we going to lead? Are we going to lead through experience, experiential learning? We talk about it in soccer all the time. How? How are they going to experience it? If you don't want to be honest, you don't want to be truthful. This provider holistic, that's what they say. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the questions. Are we gonna do it like that? And, and if we're gonna do it like that, don't you, don't we need a level, some level of honesty? Because this, this got holistic implication on a child's life, on a on a young player's life. Or are we leading like cowards? Or are we leading like a hero? I can't remember his last name. Cuss. He was a boxing trainer. He said, uh, "the the hero, the hero and uh, um, the hero and the coward experience the same fear. The hero and the coward experience the same fear. But what they do when they experience their fear determine if they are coward or if they are hero." How are we going to lead? Are we going to lead as cowards? Are we going to lead in a way that we are pondering? We know it's wrong. We know it's not the right. We know it will not help the child in the long term. But we, but we, we're happy to have that enrollment for the next two or three years. We're happy to put them on Instagram talking about we, we, we training them and we getting them ready. When it's only for ourselves, it's it's for us. It's for what it's for what we want to achieve. We we selling we selling uh, we manipulating people to believe that what we're doing. I mean, if you're doing it the right way, awesome. But what is the outcome? Show show us what is the outcome. No, show us when the parents show up on the field and dictate how you train, tell you what to do. Let's see what you say. Let's see if you're able to tell the parents the truth about what is going on with their child and see. Let's see how they will respond to you. Let's see when you demand more from them in terms of their commitment to development, what they say. 
Oh, you're not going to say that because you know if you say it, they will not come back. So are you leading? Are you truly leading? You know, if, they, if you tell them the truth about why their child not supposed to be doing what they're doing, or, or they're not where they think they are, are they going to come back? Yeah, because I I I I I I had had one experience where told said player, like, listen, you have to, you at this point where you need to take on more. You need to do more. <laughs> you need to you if you if you if you're gonna do this, I'm not gonna sit here and lie and tell you you're gonna be this when you get to this age, if you don't do this. Because nothing, there's nothing that proves that if you do it the way how you're doing it you will succeed. If you can show me the data, if you can show me anything of evidence that prove that if this is the way you do it, it works, then okay. But I could show you and I, sh I showed them. This is how players get to this level. And if you're saying you want your child to be at this level, if this child is saying that's what they're dreaming of, this is what you need to do. Know someone who says, yes, yeah, 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 you're right. And then, they're doing the same thing. They're doing the same thing against what I've said. But they're leading. They're telling people they're leaders. They're telling people that they know how to lead and develop people in an honest way. So how you could say something is right, but then you go do the very thing that is wrong. Wow. Does that child really need you as a leader? Does a child does that child really need you as a leader in terms of just forget life, just okay, there's soccer. Do they really need you as a leader? You have to lead the right way. We have to lead through a very disciplined manner. We all need discipline because we all talk about it. You cannot achieve nothing with discipline. Without discipline, you might get through. You 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 might succeed at for uh, for a short amount of time. But evil have in in the history of things, evil have never overcome good. It don't matter how good it looks. Good is undefeated. You show me one good that is defeated. Good is undefeated, is the undisputed champion of life. Do you understand that? Life is not undisputed champion of the world. No, it is the undisputed champion of life. Good. You don't matter how much evil you do. It don't matter how much bad you do. It don't matter how much good you get from bad. If you don't have no conviction in your heart that knowing that what you're doing, that someday can come back and bite you, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. At least I know I'm in trouble if I do that. I'm not hiding from it. It don't matter. Yeah, I said it. If you, if you are doing something that you're not supposed to be doing and there's absolutely no conviction in you to get your house in order, get yourself in order, it, it might not happen when everybody wants it to happen. But if you don't have that in your heart, you are in trouble. Because good is undefeated. It is the undisputed champion of life. So guess what? You will take an L. It don't matter. If you are doing the wrong things without no concern of doing the right things, without no desire of doing the right things, you will take an L. You're taking a, if you're taking an L right now, you should know. You should understand clearly what is happening. Even if you're trying to do good, 
<laughs> because even good, you have to hit stumbling blocks because those stumbling blocks are taking you to a higher level. This is why leadership is so important. Because leadership is supposed to teach you that every stumbling block in your way is preparing you for something greater. Because they say new levels will bring new devils. So new levels are supposed to be something good. But then there's something bad waiting right up there for you. So if you get in all these struggles while you're pursuing to do something good, which you will ultimately get to because good is undefeated. You remember the man, the man that built his house on the sand? The, the water came and washed it away. I think it was a nice house. I believe it was well painted too. I believe it was awesome. I believe it had it had so many uh, couches in there. It had it must he had like five flat screen TV. It it probably had like six cars. It it probably had a, a million dollar in the in the account. But this it said the water came and remove it. Then the man that built his house on the rock. I don't know where I don't know what you're building your house on. <laughs> It might be looking very nice now. It might be looking like, yeah, you got it all figured out. But what you only you know, only you know how to lead. That's why I'm asking the question. I'm not telling you. I, I don't claim to have the answer. I'm asking, how do you lead? I would love to know. Because whatever you build that on, I hope when the when the water comes, when the storm comes, it it must find it ready. Because good is undefeated. It is the undisputed champion of life. Good. So if you every day, if you get up and all you can think about is how you could destroy somebody else's life, how you could make them punish, how you could make them only you know that in your heart. Nobody knows. Only you. Only you knows. Only you knows. Like you could be doing something and you could say that's what they deserve. You could justify it. Okay, I'm not there to, to argue that. I'm saying if that is in your heart to see somebody suffer or to see somebody go through hell, if that is your justification, listen, good is undefeated. You will take an L. At some point in time, if that's how you want to lead, I would rather lead with good. And if I haven't, my desire is to, to do it. So I just put it in the atmosphere. My desire is to lead with good, to lead with truth, to do it the right way. And the right way is the honesty in your own heart to see transformation. Now, how you go about it, it will need reflection. You will need to go back and forth. You will need to challenge yourself. You need to challenge. You will, you will have to desire feedback. You will have to want the questions to be asked. You will, you will do everything because it don't mean that you will get it right. But you have to have the passion. You're going to have to have the desire. You will have to have the honesty in your heart to do it. And you will have to want to lose because you're undefeated. You are the you will be the undisputed champion of life. You have to, you must have the confidence. I know you might say, well, okay, I don't understand what he's saying. Excuse me. Because I'm I'm not connected. I'm not I'm not connected in that way. But maybe you need to be connected in that way. Because if you really look around at what is happening to you and what might happen to you. Are you not afraid? You are a leader. Are you not afraid that what you might be doing will destroy you? Because good is undefeated. It is the un 
disputed champion of life. Good. Good. It don't matter how big you think you are. Goliath thought he was big too. He's the big Philistine. He was leading the pack. And a little boy come out with a, with a, with a stone and a sling and took his life. Because he was doing evil. He was doing the wrong thing. This boy had no sword. He couldn't even, he had no sword. He couldn't even, he couldn't even carry the, 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 the protective things. He couldn't even carry the shield. He couldn't carry nothing. But he was coming with good. Listen to what I'm saying. David was leading with good. He was leading with good. You're not afraid that you're this big bad giant. You're the big bad wolf. You control all things. You could shut doors. You could open doors. You could say who would never coach again. You could go and you could you could label people. You could destroy their name. You could you could tell everybody their secrets. You could oh my god, you could do so much things because guess what? It will destroy them. I say yes, destroy me. Do it. It's good. Do it. Because that's, that makes you feel good. As a coach, that makes you feel good. But see yourself as Goliath. See yourself. The man in charge, the big bad wolf, the big, big giant who could destroy anything. The ones, the one that said, I will feed you to the dogs. That's how he led. He said, I will feed you to the dogs. He, he, no service. I'm going to, I'm going to correct you. And then here comes good with nothing. Little boy, little boy, just good in his heart. And you will see that David wasn't a perfect man. <laughs> the story will show. History will show he wasn't a perfect man. But here comes good, leading by good. And still today is known as the undisputed, the undefeated. And when he did good, even the king, Saul, the leader, got in his own feelings and wanted to destroy good so now so now i did good i did so much good that people are now following my good so now you're coming for me and that is what will happen with leadership when you start doing good people will come for you the very people who say they're your friends they serve the very people who have been in your space the very people who know the very private things about your life those are the people will come for you when you start doing good because that's how you want to lead. You want to lead by good. Saul loved David because he destroyed the wickedness. And then he got in his own feelings because he couldn't lead how David was leading. So guess what he said? I want to kill this little boy. And we know the story what happened to him also. So what am I saying? When you lead with good in your heart, you are undefeated. You will be the undisputed champion when it's all said and done. You have to lose. You have to. You might have to lose now, but you're not really losing. You're being set up. You're being set up. You're being asked tough questions. You're being challenged in this moment. How will you reign? How will you lead? See, I open our reflection on this very important responsibility. Don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> I don't know who is listening, who is hearing this right now. But I would challenge you to lead with good. I would challenge you. Keep that conviction in your heart. It don't matter. It don't matter what you will come up against. Maybe you need it. Maybe you need that. Maybe you need... You need the things that will come in your life. Maybe you need all the bad things that will happen to you. But I challenge you to continue to lead with good. Because good is undefeated. That's your you're looking, you are you looking for confidence? 
This is the only confidence that you need. Something that is undefeated. It's undisputed. There's nothing like it. It's called good. It never lose. It never lose. Even it look like it's losing, it never lose. I see. I say, keep fighting for it. Keep going after it. And if you can do good, do good. If you cannot do good, walk away. Walk away. Go in a corner and get quiet. You don't have to do evil. Take heed. Ask yourself some tough questions as you lead these young people. They come into your practice tomorrow. <laughs> You're probably sitting down looking at them right now and ask yourself, are you giving service or are you the authoritarian? You're the correction. You're the corrective officer. You, you demand because you're in charge. I'm not saying don't discipline. Don't get me wrong. You said the spade the rod, you spoil the child. That's what they say. Who knows? I'm not saying don't discipline. I'm not saying none of those things. But I think God said who you love, he chastised. So yes. But he also served. And he served us by giving us grace. He serves us by giving us mercies and, and love and kindness. And he's patient. A service, because we don't deserve it. <laughs> we don't. I don't. I really think I don't. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful because guess what? There's life. I have life. I'm here sitting, talking, regardless of all I've done. And what, I, what I'm doing is still grace because of a man who decide that, you know what, leading is service. Leading is to serve. It's not only to correct. And if he has done it in such a perfect way, because we, we, they're leaving the home and they're coming in to an environment where they're trying to run from that, so now they're not open to learn. They're open to challenge because who dare you? Who who do you think you are? You're not my you're not my you're not my mother. You're not my father. You don't get to tell me nothing. So what they're saying to you? Don't lead me. Just do as my parents would require. Since we're paying this money, you just do do what do what I ask you to do. That's what coaches have been relegated to. They cannot lead. They cannot lead. They are following. Don't be offended. Good is undefeated. <laughs> Good is undefeated. Lead so that you are able to inspire them to apply the right things in life that will help them ultimately. Come on, bring about transformation. The development that we talk about so openly. Just for the human experience, for the human existence, you have to lead. You have to try and lead. How do you lead? How? How? I just asked him the question. Would that suffice? Would that make sense? Would would that be the thing that you want to do? So hopefully, I see you next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Hopefully, I see you next. Hopefully, I see you next Monday. Hopefully, you share. Hopefully, you share this podcast. I'm not holding my breath because I already know good is not something that we, good is not something that we really push, you know, good is not something that we really support. That's, no, I understand it. It's not a problem, not offended. And no one should be offended by things that they are striving to do good, that there's a lot of pushback and there's a lot of challenges. It's okay. 
But if you get up here and you start gossiping and you start talking about people's private lives and, and you start discussing things and, and you start exposing people and stuff, you will see masses. The masses will come. And they will share. But hopefully, hopefully, that we all will do a better job of leading with good. We'll, we all will, we, we can all strive. I think we could agree on that. I think so. However we lead, I think we could agree that we should do it with good. We should do it with good in our hearts. We should have the passion uh, to see transformation in the lives of every single person that we are responsible to lead. So, thank you again. If you are here in private or you're here in secret, however, however you are here, <laughs> lead with good. It is, it is undefeated. And if you're struggling to do good, keep going. Keep going. And if you're not afraid, be afraid. Be afraid. If you're not leading with good, I, I, I tell you tonight, be afraid. Be afraid. Because good never lose. It is undefeated. It is undisputed. It is the champion of life. And I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that good will never lose. Stay blessed. Have a good night and enjoy the rest of your week. Now is the time to keep your family warm with quality insulation for your home from Pro Insulation Company. At Pro Insulation, we solve all your residential and commercial insulation needs. Attics, crawl spaces, walls and ceilings, new and existing homes, and we offer traditional insulation and spray foam. Call Pro Insulation Company today for your free in-home estimate for all your insulation needs. Leave it to the pros and call Pro Insulation Company in Plainfield today. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experienced coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun, so why not name it Rex? An elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.